Almost ready for the second half kickoff between Evans and Grovetown. We'll take it down to Matt Lane with Coach Damian Postel and an Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. That's right, John. Coach, very exciting first half. A lot of touchdowns scored, a lot of big plays. It seemed like it was just a big play first half. Uh, what, do you, what did you talk to your team about coming out in the second half and what they're going to have to do to not only uh, kind of write the score, but get ahead of the get ahead of the night uh just uh you know overcoming adversity just like we did last week i mean we were down 18 nothing at one point in that game took a lead 21 18 just keep our composure and just win our battles that's our thing we you know win, win your battle so we just focused on trying to just get that done what did you see in the first half that maybe y'all needed to work on because it just seemed like it was big play after big play was it breakdowns i mean what did you see it was a couple breakdowns on our defense um Guys upfield, you know, we worked on trying to stay on the line of scrimmage, making plays right there. So that's what we were doing earlier. And then we finally started getting guys to go upfield for some reason and just kind of had they open up their offense a little bit. And then we, we hit a couple big plays just because of, you know, just touch passes or whatever. You know, so we just continue to just try to, uh, you know, not to, not to get the big plays and we get big plays as well. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you, John. Matt Lane and our thanks to Coach. All right, A.B., one possession game, 21-13. We have 24 minutes left to play. What do you expect? Well, I think, you know, the coach said it as far as what they need to do is limit big plays for Evans. And I think you're going to see the two teams try to do the same thing. I, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I didn't realize how good Bingham could throw the ball for Grovetown. I think that gives them a, a, a nice, you know, weapon. Uh, in this second half, knowing that he can throw it. And hopefully, you know, his big throws, maybe that opens things up for D'Angelo Durham because actually it's Grovetown that's had a hard time running the football tonight. Evans has run it pretty well with Taylor. Um, so, I, you know, again, this is a toss-up game. These two teams are both very good. It's going to come down to, you know, a turnover here, or a big play here. Right now Evans has an advantage, you know, so Grovetown's going to have to come out and play that big second half the way they did against Heritage last week. Quickly, some other scores before we get the second half kicked off. Yes, here. speaking of Heritage, uh, they jumped out on a big lead on Greenbrier, but Greenbrier's battled back. They were down 15-3. to three. It's now 18-15 Greenbrier. Uh, Alcobi and Lakeside also in this same region. Uh, Alcobi leads 14-13 at the half there. Some, some top teams in the area struggling tonight a little bit. Burke County against Richmond. It's 27-13. That would expect to be a, a bigger blowout. Thompson was only up on Baldwin, 7 to nothing at half. Evans beat Baldwin 45-2. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, you have uh, uh, Jefferson, uh, Jefferson County against Butler, 27 to 12. Butler hanging in there a little bit at halftime. Dodge County hammering Washington County, 21 zip. Aquinas is up 25 zip on Green County. Screven County leads West Side, 35 to nothing. Lincoln County flexing their muscles tonight against Warren County, 49 to eight. Over in South Carolina, Barnwell looks like they might remain unbeaten. They lead Allendale. 21 to nothing. North Augusta in a game that only has five first downs. Mm. Uh, they lead uh, in these two high-powered offenses. They lead South Aiken 7 to nothing. Dewan Bell has a couple of interceptions in that game. Uh, and also uh, Silver Bluff over Calhoun County, 14 to zip. Midland Valley leads AC Florida 32 to 13. And Gilbert on top of uh, Strom Thurmond right now, 14 to 7. And you mentioned that Barnwell team that uh, – you guys will see next Friday night on Game Night Live. I will be on assignment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what assignment is that? Uh, this, this assignment is Boston uh, yeah. to see the Super Bowl rematch between the Falcons and Patriots. That's pretty awesome, man. That's that pretty should be you've well. Had some good. You've had it, better Falcon trips, maybe than Georgia <laughs> trips. I don't know. That Notre Dame trip was pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, pretty awesome. So Grovetown is going to receive the second half kickoff. Remember, Evans received the first half kickoff, but immediately turned the ball over so it'll be the Warriors to receive and back deep for the Warriors is looks like that's uh, AJ Hassan yeah it was 22 back there yeah. and the way the ball goes out of bounds keep in mind Grovetown you know one of the running backs that's really put up a, a huge numbers and made a lot of noise around the area this year is AJ Brown at Harlem AJ Brown was here at Grovetown mm -hmm. you know imagine if this offense had him as a weapon uh, this year you know they did get Bingham who moved in it's funny there have been more transfers within the county this year than I could ever recall you had on the Evans offensive line Gray Nichols was at Lakeside last year Jamar Bingham the quarterback at Grovetown was at Lakeside AJ Brown moved and and Chase Pennington the quarterback at Harlem they moved from Grovetown over to Harlem this season. So here come the Warriors down eight. And it's Bangham to start and he'll keep and he'll get four before he's hit and hit hard by Malik Gibson. Yeah, Gibson uh, got a good athlete there, Malik Gibson. Also uh, in on that play was Jacob Anderson, the linebacker. 
Gibson overran the play but came back to get the quarterback out. He was going after the running back, Durham. But Bingham kept it, did not pitch it on the option. Bingham's already accounted for two touchdowns tonight. Had the one big, long touchdown pass to Wharton. Mm -hmm. Second and six. And it'll be Bingham again, pushing ahead. And we might have and a nominee for our Augusta Pain Center hit of the game. Well, the guy who laid the hit, the, the runner, the quarterback, is the one injured on the play, though. The defensive player was Malik Gibson. He lost his helmet on the play. Watch this. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it looks like maybe he just lost his win. Yeah. Yeah, got win. Let's well, hope win that's all it is. Uh, Nathan Edwards pointing out that he fell on the football, and it does look like he got the wind knocked out of him. So while they tend to him, we will take time out on the field. Bingham was able to come off under his own power, but Taylor Youngblood will replace him at quarterback at least for this play, and he will hand off to Cofield, who will pick up maybe a yard or two. And Youngblood, A.B., is the quarterback we thought we were going to see because we thought Bingham was injured. Yeah. But Bingham has played the whole way so far, and now he's back in there on second down. Yeah, Youngblood was the starter all of last season and then was the starter at the beginning of this year. But with the offense sputtering a little bit and turning the ball over, they turned to Bingham, and he has been outstanding for him and really gave him a shot in the arm. And, uh, again, they won a shootout last week, and they're in another shootout right now. He's back in there with Cofield and Durham in the backfield. And it'll be a little trickeration coming this side. Emmanuel Bryson has the room across the 40 and up to near the 45-yard line. Yeah, nice play there by Grovetown and well-timed. Uh, again, these coaches have done a good job tonight. Love that play. That's going to pick up 11 up to the 44-yard line and another first down for Grovetown as the Warriors continue this drive. It is now 25, 24 yards deep and a first down from their own 44-yard line. Out of the gun is Bingham. Going to hand it off. It is Durham straight ahead, pushing across midfield and into Evans' territory at the 48-yard line. Yeah, Durham, tough customer there. Good size running back. He's able to – the offensive line opened the hole, and he was able to you know, slam right through it. Nice run. Give him eight on that, and it'll – I'll give him seven. And it'll be second and seven from the Evans 49 yard line. Evans showing blitz. Here they come. And it's Durham straight through the gut. He'll pick up the first down. Well, it'll be close to it at least at the 46 yard line. Yeah, one thing to remember too, we were talking college football during the break and we saw the little trick play. One of the uh, the co-offensive coordinator on this Grove Town team, Dexter Carter, former Florida State Seminole. Any excuse you can get to bring up Florida State. <laughs> well, this year I haven't been bringing them up as much. I can promise you that. I was wondering when we were going to talk about last week's game. Mm -hmm. That was rough. Well, you know, I always fall back on we've you know we've beaten them seven in a row. Let's give them one. And they did give him the first down, so it'll be first and ten from the 46. It is Durham again, just giving him a healthy dose of D'Lo, and he is across the 44 to about the 43-yard line. Well, I tell you what, you know, Grovetown fell behind last week in battle back. They're behind now, but, boy, they've come out in the second half with a nice game plan. Durham up the middle and then try to beat them on the edge with the other guys, and so far it's working as they are, you know, off to a nice drive here into Evans' territory at about the 43. Three straight carries for Durham on this drive. Well, Evans... A little undersized defensively. They've got Germany, who's, you know, a big guy up front and a couple other linemen, but those linebackers are small, and Grovetown may be taking advantage of that a little bit. Durham and Cofield are the backs once again, and the pitch will be to Durham. He needs some help. He's in trouble at midfield, trying to make something out of nothing, and does, and gets back to the 46-yard line. Still going to lose three, but could have lost more than that. Wow. I don't know if we've got a highlight, a replay of that. If we do, watch the beginning of this play, the block on the edge by, it was Cofield. Wow. Mm. Cofield just took the linebacker out on that play. Jacob Anderson was the linebacker. So, actually. Yeah, they're yeah. going to say he gained a yard out of yeah. that, so he definitely made something out of nothing. It'll bring up third and six. That could have been a disaster for Grovetown instead. 
They put themselves in a manageable third down play here. And they need six yards. Clock ticks under eight minutes in the third quarter. Grovetown down eight. Evans on the move. With the blitz. Yeah, and it's Bangham in trouble, needing to get rid of it. Fires wow. long downfield. There's a man back there, and it is incomplete. Good defensive play back there by Derek Canteen, who we've man. called his name several times already tonight. They, they call him all the seniors here. He's the young guy. He's on junior. But, man, he has been in right in position. And Grotown got lucky. They got away with a hold right down here. Oh, sure <laughs> did. A, a tackle almost. And, man, Canteen in great position and made a nice play on the ball. He already has the interception earlier tonight, and that's a big pass break up to save six for the Knights. And Grovetown will be in a kicking situation with Taylor Youngblood. Yeah, Nathan's pointing out, though, at this position on the field, you're fourth and six, you're at the 40. You're a little surprised they're punting. Well, it's a Ken Nugent one call, that's all moment. And they called Coach it. Postel, and <laughs> they called it. He's going <laughs> to kick it away. Well, he's going to kick it and trust that defense. Oh, my, oh, my. Talking about dodging a bullet there, Phoenix Jenkins bobbled the football, and lucky for him, he was right by the sideline. It goes out of bounds. So Evans, who had had such great field position in the first half, averaging starting in their own in their in the 40s, now they're pinned back a little bit on this possession. Well, we have a moment. We want to remind you that you can catch. A recap of this game and all the highlights. All the highlights and scores from all the games from across the area. 30 minutes of high school football coming up for you at 11.35 over on WJBF, as always, with Football Friday Night. Nathan Palm, Zach Hughes, back at Television Park, working hard uh, tonight, getting ready for the big broadcast, 11.35 on WJBF. And like we said, too, you can always watch this game as it's streaming live. We've got folks, uh, D'Angelo Durham's fans and family from all over, St. Louis and then the uh, Virginia Newport News. And we appreciate all you guys watching and uh, certainly appreciate uh, those who are serving our country as his father, Sergeant Major Durham, in the stands tonight. Also saw our good friend, former Midland Valley coach Rick Knight in the stands tonight. There's no gain on first. And around the right side is that's Watkins again. Watkins again. Well, if somebody's running for Evans, you can almost guarantee it's going to be one or three. Taylor or Watkins, those are the 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 duo uh, for Evans that have really carried him this year. And it looks like at the end of that play, Holmes, the receiver, might have got his ankle. Mm. Kind of ro somebody rolled into him, might have turned his ankle there. Give him six on that run, so it's going to be third and four, and I believe that might give Evans a big, juicy first down here. Well, that's just the second penalty for Grovetown, but that hurts him because they had Evans in a you know, third down spot, third and about four and a half or five, and instead now Evans has the first down. And it'll give him the ball up at the 29-yard line. One thing I do want to mention, too, we talked about all the college signees Grovetown has had recently, and one of them – is a kid that a lot of people think might be in the NFL one day. It's Deontay Smith, who's with East Carolina. He's gone up there and really transformed himself into a special offensive lineman, not that he wasn't in high school. And they're talking about him being a, a real NFL prospect as Taylor takes it around the end. There is Taylor with room across the 40 to the 44-yard line before he is dragged down. It'll be another first down for Evans. Uh, Taylor just makes this team so scary because any given moment, he can use that speed and that elusiveness to get out there. And you see here, he faked the handoff to Watkins and followed him. He had a great stiff arm and just able to, you know, get around that end, get around that edge. So Evans was backed up deep in their own territory, but now they've got it across the 40. Knights on the move, already leading by eight inside six minutes to play in the third. And that is Watkins straight up the gut, nothing there. Well, again, and some pushing and shoving there at the end of the play. Watkins, I like that, smiling and hands the ball to the officials and turns around. <laughs> no gain on the play, bring up second down. All these schools are so close together, mm -hmm. Grovetown, Evans, Lakeside, Greenbrier especially. And, you know, these kids all know each other. They all, you know, on the weekends, maybe hanging out at the same places and so a lot of talking going on. This was the game everybody on the Georgia side of things was looking at in our area this week, knowing that, you know, the region implications, the state playoff implications and all that. Evans, such a powerhouse with region title teams back in the 80s and 80 and 87. But again, as was the case with so many schools in our area, yeah. as other schools around them opened up, dilutes the talent pool a little bit. Yeah, I tell you, those teams in the late 80s at Evans were pretty special. They uh, 
you know, the 86, 87, 88, 89, that gr all those groups then, they were really, really talented. And they had a team a couple of years ago that went 10, a few years back, 2007, I believe, that went 10 and 0, but then got upset in the first round of the playoffs. And then the following year in 08, they won a playoff game. That's their last playoff win nine years ago. Needs six on third down. Taylor throwing complete first down and then some into Grovetown territory. Well, Phoenix Jenkins caught the pass, and he's been their kind of go-to guy tonight, it seems, even though coming into the game, you know, they had a, a, a group of receivers that were all kind of bunched in, Holmes and Jenkins and De uh, Deli and a few other, or excuse me, uh, uh, Rashawn Willis. Uh, but tonight, Phoenix Jenkins has been the guy, already with a touchdown grab, his third of the season. Needed four, he got nine. It'll be first down Evans at the Warrior 40-yard line. Yeah, that ball was zipped in there by Taylor. And this has been a nice drive by Evans. Remember, it started way back inside their own 15. It's time to give us to Watkins. He makes the first man miss and gets across the 40, about the 37-yard line. Well, Greg, Rhino Rogers had him there for a moment, but he got away. We haven't called Rogers' name a lot tonight, uh, but you saw him there fighting off a blocker and getting his hand on that jersey and then coming in to help finish it off was McCord. There's the duo that has been so effective for the Knights this year, Demikas Taylor and Corey Watkins. Gave him three on the carry. This time throwing over the middle. It is complete. That is Jason Deli. And he will move the chains across the 30-yard line. Well, Deli is a kid with really good speed. There they hit him on the little quick hitter. As a matter of fact, his sister, one of the finest track athletes in Columbia County in quite some time, Discussion on the field. Looks like we're ready to go. This night offense moving now and increasing the tempo. At the 34 yard line, it is first down. And have motion on the snap. I mentioned Jason Deli's sister. She signed recently to run track at Wake Forest. <laughs> So just the third penalty on Evans. Again, very clean game. Three first-half penalties combined. Here's two, uh, already two in this half. But compared to what we've seen this year, John, this has been a pretty, oh, we'll, pretty well-played we'll, game. We'll take this all day. Again, we're coming off a couple of weeks ago having a game that saw 26 first-half penalties. Tonight we had three. What, did we have 19 last week? 19 last half? week. Yeah, we, we came close. Yeah, from 26 to 19 down to three. I like the pattern. <laughs> Nathan says we're going to zero next week. First and 15, Watkins gets some room. Sideline, Watkins. Wow. 33 yards, touchdown, Whoa. Evans. John Hart. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to get bottled up, and then all of a sudden he's in the end zone. Whoa. That is the speed we were talking about. They bottled him up, bottled him up, bottled him up, and then finally he gets an edge, and, man, when he gets just a little crease, he is gone. We saw that 4-4 speed right there, and that's a legit 4-4. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys say they run it. <laughs> he's done it a bunch. This well, if summer. you doubt it, watch this right here. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. The camera caught up with him finally. <laughs> well, man. The Grovetown defense did not, and it'll be Max Tyler on to attempt the point after in the – Georgia Military College kicks for college. Extra point is up and good, and Evans extends its lead to 28-17. 234 left to play in quarter number four. The lead is 15 now for Evans after the long touchdown run by Corey Watkins. And Max Tyler to kick it away for the Knights. And as per usual, out of the back of the end zone, and the Warriors will take over their own 20. And he was unhappy with that because it bounced at the one and then went out. <laughs> Matt Lane down on well, the sideline tells us that Max Tyler told him this is his best kicking performance of his career. Well, the touchbacks are a norm. The punt, I don't think he's used to. The 57-yard mm, punt that he mm, pinned mm. down at the one. But, yeah, I mean, they, that's, like I said, his nickname, according to Scadden, Scott Scadden, who does the PA for Evans, is touchback Tyler. He's living up to it tonight. 
and he did make that 49-yard kick earlier this year against North Augusta in the first game of the season, 49-yard field goal. Well, if you're Grovetown, you need points. It's getting late, and you're down two scores now. And they'll keep it on the ground, and here we go. There goes D'Angelo Durham. Durham, 30, 20, 10. D'Angelo Durham, touchdown, Grovetown, 80 yards. There's a little answer for you. There is an answer for you right there. Wow, D'Angelo Durham, his 10th or 11th touchdown of the season, second tonight. Happy for that young man with his father in the stands, his second TD, and that one a big one as he gets Grovetown right back in it. His dad's going to have to make the trip south for every game if this yeah. keeps up. Well, good for him. So the Georgia Military College kicks for college extra point to try to pull Grovetown within one possession now. And a delay, and it's blocked. Wow, that's big. And that will now, keep it a two-possession yeah. game. I don't know what happened on the snap. The uh, the kicker, Donnie McClain, paused as if the snap were not ready. We'll have to take a look. Well, he was uh, perfect the on the season on extra points yep. coming into tonight, but that's two. One he missed, and then that one, just a botch situ situation. We'll take a look at the touchdown first. Watch the blocking right here on this left side of this offensive line. And Oh, and a defender fell down sure as did. well. And, boy, Durham, once he got in the open field, he was gone. And Delhi can fly. So that shows you how fast Durham was running. And I don't know if we have another look at the extra point or not to see what happened on the snap. Well, we do not have a replay of that. So, either way, the score will be 28-19. to So it is now a two-possession game with 2.19 to play in the third quarter. Back and forth, these two teams go. And now if you're Grovetown, you need to stop. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, look, still plenty of time sure. left in the game, but, and it has been a game of big plays, but here's where you need that defense that was so touted and the fans and Grovetown folks were so confident in, they're going to have to step up and make a play here. That defense came into the night with 17 sacks on the season, seven interceptions, picked up an eighth interception uh, early on you know, the first play of the ball game. Well, speaking of Tyler kicking it off, this guy, Miles Jackson, done a pretty good job. And he doesn't look like he really even does the full kick. It's almost like a punch, but he booms it as well. And another good one. And the ball is on the ground. It'll be picked up by Watkins. Johnny on the spot. And he'll bring it up across the 20. Actually going to have a pretty good return up to the 31-yard line. Could have been disastrous for the Knights. Well, that's but instead, they're going to have a pretty good field position. And that's the second time that Phoenix Jenkins, usually so sure-handed, has dropped a football on a return. And that one could have been disaster. And he's lucky that his guy was there. And we do have a player down for Grovetown, and well, that is. That's Rodgers. That's a you know, big blow if Rogers. he has to come out. He is the heart and soul of this defense, 90 tackles. Mm -hmm. But you see him, they don't call him Rhino for nothing. Tough customer. And he'll walk back out. And he is another one of these okay. kids on this Grovetown team as they got a lot getting recruited, and he's one of them. Offers from Cumberland, Culver Stockton College, and also interest from Florida Tech, Bucknell, and uh, Morgan State. Knights will set up shop at their own 30. It is Taylor on the carry in trouble. He'll bring it up to about the 33-yard line before he is hit by the aforementioned Greg Rogers. And he's hurting, buddy. I tell you, he's a tough customer, but at some point. And now he is back down on the field. Yeah, at some point you almost have to step in and bring him out because he's not going to be a guy that's going to bring himself out. Well, he's yeah. on his back right now at the 34-yard line. So they're going to tend to him, and while they do, we have a special guest uh, that we'll bring in from McDonald's. I believe we've got uh, – oh, there we go. Back again <laughs> with us. How are you? Good to see you. Now, you, you so you made the trip over? <laughs> well, it's always good to have you in, uh, Miss Townsend. Tell her, you know – what a game we got tonight. <laughs> and I, yeah, in high school football, a lot of times, and, and by the way, Angie Towns with McDonald's, look, a lot of times you'll have blowouts, and that happens. It's high school yes, football. But yes. this one has been a great battle between uh, two great teams. There can't be a person in the stands anywhere that's not happy. Absolutely. Uh, they, well, I know you guys are excited. We talked about it last week. You were kind enough to bring us some in, so we got to try the 
buttermilk uh, Chris, uh, chicken tenders. Sorry, I didn't bring any tonight. No, 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 no. That's fine. But because because I, I last week I went home stuffed. <laughs> but but no, they're they're you were happy. Well, I was for the first time I got to try the sriracha uh, mac sauce, yes. and man, it is really good too. It is good. Are you guys uh, things going well with the new uh, items? It's going great. Um, th- we just started advertising toward the end of last week. Yeah. Um, the tenders and. It is hard to keep it up. We have to cook constantly. Yeah, keep up with Which it. Which is good. That's yeah. what we want to do. The quality so. is just uh, unbelievable. Every yeah. bite just perfect on absolutely. those things. So This is the best we've had. Yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly uh, we always talk about the marriage of McDonald's and high school football and what you guys do in the community. And this is a perfect example of it. you got two oh, rivalry absolutely. schools. I know a lot of these kids in the stands probably work at the local McDonald's, <laughs> yes. and they certainly go eat there all the time. I so have Evans. I have Grove Town, and yeah. all the stores have – Lakeside and Greenbrier all yeah, even have children. Yeah, back in my store. day, that was the hangout. You yeah, hung out exactly. after the game, and now it's like that. I Trust me, if you go to one, it, it's crowded <laughs> during the game. The good thing is the service is fast, so you don't have to wait. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, you know each week we love having you come by. We love what you thank guys you. do it's for us, coming. allowing us to promote these kids and young people, and it's just awesome. So we thank McDonald's a lot. We are thank truly you. loving it. So and we, we love it also. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Ms. There we go. McDonald's oh, certainly – uh, can't wait uh, to at the end of the year. The McDonald's, of course, one of the big uh, reasons why we're able to do Border Bowl, and we've got another one coming up this January. We'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, Taylor has Evans on the move. And we will be naming our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. And Taylor right now, of course, would be in the running for the offensive player of the game as there's a flag down back at the 26-yard line that'll bring that back. And that's a shame, John Hart, because you actually know the player who caught that football. You know his father. Let's see. That is Connor Warren, that which is would Joey be Warren. the son of Joey that's Warren. That's right, the longtime uh, Augusta SID. Augusta State University uh, Sports, Sports Information, Information Director. Director. Yep. I'm sure Joey's tuning in tonight. So that'll bring back what was a significant gain, and it's going to set up third and 24. Yeah, that's a big blow there. Penalties have not hurt really either team too bad, but, boy, that's a big one. By the way, while we were talking Miss Towns, Greg Rogers did come off the field under his own power, so that's certainly good news for Grovetown. Yeah, he's a hoss. 17 tackles last week and 90 on the season. There he is right in the middle of that defense, number 35 at middle linebacker. Back on the field. Hard to keep him off. So, Evans just trying to – Get something here on second down, and there is Rodgers against stuff in the middle. Well, he made the tackle. That was the one time I think Taylor didn't make the right read. He probably should have handed this ball off to Watkins. If you watch on the side, Watkins would have one man to beat with a blocker, and instead he kept it, and Rodgers was able to come in and make a nice play. So Evans going to have to punt the football away here. Actually, take that. Let's see. This it's third, third down now. Third so. about 14 here. They could punt it now if they well, wanted to, but it'd be a really controversial call. It is Taylor rolling out. They need 13. They've got it. A first down and more. Phoenix Jenkins down the right sideline. It is a foot race to the end zone. Jenkins is he in? Down at the one-yard line. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That was a big play, though. What, 74 yards? Is that right? Or 73, I 73 guess. 73 yards as he's one yard shy. Well, Phoenix Jenkins had a big – I think he was surprised he was so wide open. Then he went, wait a second, let me run. Good job by the Grovetown guys not to give up. And who was it? D'Angelo Durham, one of those guys along with Miles Jackson. And, yeah, he was down. Good call by the official. They got it right, as they so often do. Landed on his backside right on the one. First and goal, but we're going to have to wait till the fourth quarter before we do it as quarter number three has a run out. So, at the end of three quarters of play, your score, Evans. 28 and driving. Grovetown, 19, 12 minutes left to play on Game Night Live. 